Welcome to Amusement Sparks, the theme park design show. My name's Andrew Spawn, and I'm your host. And with me today is an, a wonderful YouTuber. What what name do you go by on YouTube? What's your your handle there? Uh, make stuff is yes, the perfect name I think for people trying to make stuff. <laughs> and go. honestly, it's much easier to find you now than it was when you were on our last video. That is awesome to hear. Uh huh. Because there I think is you're a the lot third, of make third stuff thing down. Nice. Yeah, well, I'll take Isn't that it. impressive? Working my way up. You Next really podcast, are. I'm gonna be <laughs> the number one stuff maker. Uh, let's hope stuff maker. <laughs> oh boy! So, what do you do over on your channel? What kind of stuff do you make or talk about uh, the making of? Mostly just like video essays, and we do some comic books. We do those two things I just listed. <laughs> <laughs> we're expanding we're expanding we do some vlogging but it's mostly just like sort of very passionate essays about stuff that i love a bunch yeah you're you're very well spoken it's like it's like reading a, a magazine or a newspaper or whatever about a piece of media that you also love mm -hmm. i don't know i love the video essay genre it's, it's super good and you're pretty dang good at it the motion Thank graphics you. to do like your your text it's just super entertaining, you know? It's not just, like, a guy sitting there talking, um, mm -hmm. like this show, which is honestly a little hard to watch. <laughs> enjoyable to listen to, but not enjoyable to watch all the time. Although you do get to see our faces. That's kind of exactly. cool. Yeah. It's gorgeous. But, yeah, your your essays are really well edited, and I would definitely rec recommend them if no one's... Or if someone still hasn't seen any of yours, <laughs> check out Make Stuff on YouTube, if no one's seen them yet. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I'm especially go go watch those so you see how not well-spoken I am right now. It's a, it's a great <laughs> contrast. Yes, the the when, when someone else is editing it versus when you're editing yourself, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you sound like a buffoon when someone else edits you. Oh, boy. Like on this video right here. Um, speaking of, we are here to discuss another theme park. You and I did a Bioshock inspired yeah. theme park. Which is the first amusement sparks to actually exist. They went and built it immediately. They're just like, <laughs> it's it's too good. We have to. And so <laughs> yeah, go check out the Bioshock amusement park in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> Trust me, it's there. Just get on a wow. plane. We'll right. get there. You eventually. have to get there by plane crash though, don't yeah. you? Yeah. <laughs> it's very immersive. <laughs> Oh boy! But uh, we're going for another video game franchise today. What did you bring to the table, Jonathan? Uh, I brought the science adventure. That's a genre. Uh, it is. Portal by Valve. Oh my gosh! Portal by Valve. I love that. That's a super fun series. It's like a first-person shooter puzzle dark comedy game. Yep. And it a sci-fi adventure, like you said, like. It's a lot of things, but it's mm -hmm. also somehow still simple and pure and yeah, super entertaining and engrossing. Yeah, it feels so stripped down, but it's just like it also does stuff that like I've never seen in any other video game. Like so much stuff. It's not just like the because it's yeah, it's like a puzzle shooter, I guess, but yeah. uh but also it is like probably the funniest video games to like it's just a straight up comedy. And right. it's just got so much going for it. It's really inventive gameplay, and it's ton won a ton of awards for the gameplay and for the humor and the the song at the end of the first oh, yeah. game. Like, I don't know every every little piece that remains after they've edited and preened this whole thing mm -hmm. is perfect. Like, it's amazing. Most video games don't do that. Like, if they have an idea that's halfway decent, throw it in there. Let's make the game a little bit longer. But this one is like you said, so stripped down and so pure and. Yeah, fantastic. And I it's actually super good. just watched a video on the uh, early betas for it, and it was amazing to see how much more visually complex it was. Or mm -hmm. it's just like uh, it was because it was built in like the Half Life Two engine, right. and uh, so it was a lot of like rubble and darkness and the weird lighting effects and stuff. And right. the end product is just like nah, it's a bunch of white walls. <laughs> And mm -hmm. uh, blue portals, orange portals, you're good to go. And it looks gorgeous. It feels yeah. great. It's hilarious. It's the best. It and feels very sciency and sci-fi-ish. Mm -hmm. It's more more Star Trek than Star Wars. Like it's not yeah. super lived in. Everything's still very, excuse me, very sanitary. Mm -hmm. um, 
But yeah, have you seen the original game? Like it was a, a college oh, project. Oh yeah, it was like an arbacular drop. Or yeah, something an arbacular like drop, which and was the, like it looked it like looks, it was you know like a demon realm and <laughs> right. It's a dungeon with a really, I I think personally a grotesque looking main character, <laughs> and but the 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 idea was there like the portal yeah. system which which what that is is there's two different colors of portals a blue one and an orange one and if you walk through one you come out of the other one so it's mm-hmm. kind of about teleportation and puzzles involving you know making a hole here on the wall and then a hole here on the floor and you jump through the one on the floor and you shoot through the one on the wall exactly which is confusing yeah. if you've never played it or seen it but it's yeah. fantastic it's it's really once you've played a few levels you're like oh i get it i can solve puzzles like this now i can figure out how to manipulate the environment and like teleport all around the place with just this simple mechanism. Exactly. So cool. It's one of my favorite games. It's really short. So like I haven't got mm-hmm. a ton of hours on it. The first one, I mean, but mm-hmm. it's such a great game. It's entertaining all the way through and the puzzles are really fun. It's a great series and it's, yeah. there's only been the two games in one comic. Like I kind of wish there was more to the world, but then again, I think their goal is to make it hundred percent perfect. Mm-hmm. However short that may be. It's so yeah. pure. I don't know. Which is why we should uh, really sully it with mm-hmm. an extended theme park. Yes. As long as the whole thing is at least 50% decent, then we should just have as go. much as we possibly can. It doesn't need to be 100% <laughs> pure. <laughs> Throw Mickey Mouse in there. He's generally good. <laughs> just toss a bunch of stuff in there. Bumper cars. Oh, man. Cares? I mean, they have kind of already done that. They, I guess the they've done the um, Lego Dimensions Game, oh, those, that's like, toys right. Toys to Life games, like Skylanders, kind of. But yeah, they had a Portal Two one, which is kind of weird. They I don't did. I don't think you actually use the portal gun in it, from what I can recall. I don't actually know though. Um, but I know yeah. it's a lot of other characters. There's like Gandalf and Wild Style and Batman right. running through like the Portal Two world. <laughs> kind of, kind of weird. You know, but I I'm, guess I'm gonna make a strong artistic choice here, and I'm gonna exclude Gandalf from our Portal theme park. <laughs> All right. That's fair. That is an artistic choice. Uh, okay, so if Gandalf is out, who's going to be there? The The main character of the games is named Chell, yep. and she's a silent protagonist. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's just a test subject, right? Like, she's not a creator of this. She's just a an involuntary... Well, I guess she's a volunteer, technically. I don't know exactly her background or her story because uh, again, it's so pure. They're hiding a lot of the details. Uh oh, I'll I'll, I'll happily because so th- if there's like two things that I consider myself an expert on, which uh-huh. are very few things, I know a l- very like a lot of like s- the surface like knowledge of a lot of things, but there are two things where it's just like I've consumed everything I can, and it's Bioshock, uh-huh. and uh and the portal slash half-life universe because they're nice. technically connected uh, yeah what, what's half-life for anyone who doesn't know about oh yeah half-life is valve's original game uh oh. that is comes out you know every 15 years or whatever and uh it's more it's a much darker shoot like it's sort of it's like puzzly combat where you just have to like uh use your wits to get through actual action situations uh Mm -hmm. but it's it's all like it also takes place in a lab the first one and it's like you've opened a rift into another dimension all these aliens are pouring in and you have to deal with all that stuff with cool weapons but uh yeah the two actually black mesa is where that lab uh where half-life takes place and uh aperture labs is where portal takes place and Mm -hmm. it is established in portal that they are competing laboratories uh yeah and aperture always comes up second uh for its absurdly it doesn't it doesn't do a lot of practical science it just sort of throws science at the wall and sees what sticks right there's a lot of kind of wackiness whereas Mm -hmm. black mesa feels very straightforward and like actually scientific (laughs) yeah whereas aperture is a lot more whimsical and and Mm -hmm. silly and funny but it's still pretty dark like the things they actually do there there's a lot of like hidden darkness in that universe yeah. whereas whereas half-life is like yeah this world is dark and gritty mm-hmm. but i think what what brought the aliens into the half-life universe was teleportation experiments right Isn't yeah that yeah what originally started it? so teleportation is kind of the root of this whole thing so if we can have teleportation in our theme park then this is gonna be a really easy one to design yeah. we just is have to invent have? teleportation <laughs> that's all we have to do 
Uh, well, okay, maybe we'll have to work our way around that. But that is a <laughs> we can create a pretty the big... illusion of teleportation. Yes, exactly. We can play with that space just like they play with it in the games. You're not mm-hmm. actually teleporting. It's a it's a game. It's not real. Mm-hmm. Are there any other important characters you think we need uh, to make sure are here? Glados, the uh, yes. main the main computer that's running it all. Uh, which in Portal you find out that. You think that, you know, she's just the computer program that's in charge of tests, but it turns out she's in charge of the facility because uh, she doesn't like humans that much. And yeah, she has evidently sort of taken control she, here. During the uh, Bring Your Daughter to Work Day massacre, <laughs> she, she wiped out all the humans in the whole lab except for one, mm-hmm. uh, which is a pretty dark backstory, I would say. Yeah. Which and actually, I guess Chell still. Uh, but. That also leads into Chell's origin because in the second game you can find a, uh, uh, it was like a science fair science for bringing yeah. your daughter to work day, and you find her potato battery that, uh, so she was apparently a child that was uh, taken as a volunteer. Yeah, <laughs> their bring your child their to history with volunteers is pretty <laughs> gross. Like I <laughs> guess they started out description. They started out getting like high caliber humans like olympians Mm -hmm. and geniuses to be their test subjects for their you know cool new science stuff but eventually they kind of burned through all those and then they like their budget started decreasing so they started just kind of paying people 60 dollars to come be a test subject and 60 more dollars if we can disassemble you and then reassemble you you'll get 120 bucks it's like there's some pretty funny weird sciencey stuff going Mm -hmm. on there but it does seem like a lot of the test subjects didn't necessarily want to be there and all the employees had to go through there was like mandatory mandatory volunteering right <laughs> for being test subjects so oh boy it's some some kind of weird stuff but i guess that's the role we can throw our part guests into exactly is, mandatory hey, you want 60 volunteers. Bucks? <laughs> <laughs> right or you're you, a new employee you paid us 60 bucks so you yeah to be they, a volunteer. <laughs> which yeah i i definitely like because it would, I think it would be hard to base a whole theme park around just the uh, the portal gun is what you're using to shoot around these portals. Uh, right. And th- there is, they reference a lot of crazy science stuff within the games that you don't especially see, like, much mm-hmm. variation in, but, like, you know it exists. Uh, so I would love to see this park as, like, maybe pre- like GLaDOS taking over collapse cool. of like all the the humans within the lab like almost like maybe we can do like a world's fair kind of like science expo like, wow theme for that's it. cool oh that sounds really neat the so. something i really like about the layout of aperture labs is mm-hmm. it's inside of a, an old salt mine in the upper peninsula of yeah. michigan and I guess, like, the lowest levels are kind of where they first started out back in the 40s. Yeah. And they just kind of left their lab there for whatever reason and kind of moved up a floor and built the next decade of, of their lab there and then mm-hmm. kept moving up towards the surface. So in the second game, there's a part where you go all the way down this, like, mine shaft, basically, and you end up in the, the 50s era of right. Aperture, which is kind of cool. And you can have story reasons to why, you know, this area was contaminated, so they sealed it up and then moved on to the next floor Mm kind of makes sense like if you're going to build a science lab in in a mine system to start at the farthest reaches of it and kind of expand out from there as you need to quarantine things and you lose access to that technology or whatever you know but that'd be kind of interesting to like start out in an earlier era yeah Mm -hmm. i don't know i i like you know i like the idea because like again the it they say it's science but it's so definitely not science that they're doing (laughs) uh i love the idea of like uh going from different like lands in a theme park would be Mm -hmm. actual time travel so it could be like you know you start out modern day like the everything's white and contemporary and pristine and then it's like the the tunnel that you're going to like go through to this other land it makes it look like you're time traveling and now you're in 50s aperture or 80s wow. aperture and oh that's really cool yeah and the, the story you can awesome. tell there is really interesting because this is in a way like bioshock where you can kind of uncover little snippets of the past and hear little right. audio clips and you know you see the writing on the walls a little bit as you explore these really old areas but mm-hmm. Being able to physically go there would be really cool. Yeah, 
I like Like that. if you have the, the guy who founded Aperture Science, Cave Johnson, if you mm-hmm. have him like, you know, at, portrayed at different ages and different right. levels of sanity mm-hmm. as he collapses and then, you know, eventually <laughs> dies in the 70s or whatever, or the yeah. 80s. Um, and then things get even, you know, keep getting weirder after <laughs> after he's gone already, <laughs> which is kind of interesting. But that sounds really cool. Um, yeah. Would you want them to, to look kind of sepia tone as you go to like the old days or is it going to look as pristine as it looked in the 50s? I kind of like the eye. I feel like that's a cool novel thing if it looks like, you know, you're actually in the 50s and it is like mm-hmm. that sort of pristine 50s look. You know what we could even do is like at least sections of it make it so that you're like uh, it's the same area but in different time periods. So mm-hmm. it'll be like, uh, you know, something that might be you know, a part of the park that might be run down or something in the modern day thing is pristine and new, or you're just sort of seeing the evolution of the same space in these, let's say three or four different lands. I like that idea a lot. And maybe the way we could, could lay it out is in the fifties, that was when the whole lab was its smallest size. Mm -hmm. And so for example, let's say it's this one little chunk. Mm -hmm. And then in the eighties, there's still the fifties area, the sixties area, seventies area, and the eighties area. Mm Mm-hmm. And the 80s one looks nice and new, and then the 70s one looks a little bit dated, but you can kind of revisit these areas you are already time-traveled to and see how, how run down they are and see what happened to um, these little pieces you interacted with back in the 50s. Right. That might be a little complicated, but I also think it could be kind of cool. It's not like you have to replicate everything one-to-one in every single decade. Like, that's kind right. of a lot for not yeah, a lot of return. inevitably stuff would be, like, you know, changed and over yeah. time. But. but if there are a few things left over, um, mm-hmm. kind of like on Fortnite, I don't know if you're a, a, a Fortnite gamer, mm-hmm. but the way that the map evolves over time is really interesting. And you can go back right. to this old area and see kind of the remnants of what was there last season. And it looks totally different now, but there's still evidence that this is actually the same map. It's just evolving drastically over time right so i don't know there's something eerie about that especially for going into the time travel thing Mm -hmm. if you can see you know what it looked like at its peak and then look how far it's fallen yeah now i think even and there is a sort of it's like a comedic eeriness like there is this air of mystery to the whole game where uh a few levels in because it seems like it's you know just this uh cutting edge testing facility Mm -hmm. but a few levels in you find this sort of secret room that you can portal into that has like all this like crazed writing on the walls and yes uh and like empty cans of beans everywhere and stuff and like uh and at this like throughout this whole thing you've been promised cake once you finish the test and there's all this like scrawled like the cake is a lie on the wall and (laughs) it's it's clearly some uh some crazed uh, volunteers that uh, have been able to at least hide, if not escape. And right. I, I like that idea of because that's uh, Ratman is the yeah. name of the character who Doug uh, Ratman. <laughs> Doug Ratman. And, <laughs> that's his uh, actual name. He uh, he's the one who's like he he's pretty much the one survivor of Glados taking over, uh, and. Uh, so he's been hiding out and I would love because with our Bioshock world we talked about having those uh voxophones where you could like hear different uh bits of information and stuff throughout the park uh I would love to have just little like Ratman like rooms or holes that you can find and they have like yeah. different messages on the wall and stuff like these sort of hideouts that's so cool because the main experience of it is so sanitary and ideal and yeah like utopian but then Mm -hmm. you know if you squeeze into this crack in the wall you'll see Mm -hmm. that like man someone someone was really going through some things in this room (laughs) and the artwork there's artwork back there too that's really cool it's so it's almost like discovering a cave painting or something it's like other humans were here and their experience was different in the same exact spot it's kind of cool um but yeah i like that idea a lot and I don't know if it's if it's just going to be Ratman himself or Ratman. I'm not sure how you'd say his actual name if this was a real human, but um, he's actually the star of the the comic series yeah. for the most part. The comic, not series, I guess, limited series or whatever. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, he's an interesting character for sure, and like we need to have some evidence that things aren't exactly perfect. Although the 
the robots that you talk to throughout the game, it's pretty clear that not everything is perfect <laughs> here because yeah. yeah. that's that's where the kind of dark comedy comes into the the whole piece, which we definitely need to to preserve throughout this. Yeah. And uh, so, go ahead. I was, uh, I, I, it doesn't necessarily have to be Ratman, but I also like the idea of like different cast members, as they call them at Disney, mm-hmm. uh, like in the different eras, like people of different ages playing the same character. Yes. So you would have like you know uh, a young lady at you know some kiosk in the fifties, and then she'll have like go to the modern day and it'll be the same woman but an older woman with like the same name tag and everything that's and really cool yeah i would be i would love to see weird time travel stuff in a theme park yeah I'm all for it and time travel would totally function in this world you know just that's just a thing they yeah. figured out and maybe it wasn't as profitable as they hoped so they never mass produced it or advertised it yeah. but it's just a thing they have in this this wacky lab or maybe there's something like kind of dark and creepy that happens with it like um, there's a statistic, I think, with a portal. Every time you walk through it, there's a point zero zero two percent chance that you'll just be liquefied, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> like you'll you'll just die instantly <laughs> from using it. So maybe there's something like that, or some kind of. There's a reason why they don't do this time travel thing as often, or there's mm-hmm. a reason why the the military never got hold of this. Ooh, or maybe they did though, and it's just a conspiracy. Oh man, <laughs> there's a lot of options for where we could go with that <laughs> about yeah. why time travel is not perfect. Yeah, no, and they and they love because that's like w- part of the fun with all the aperture stuff is that all of the science goes like hilariously wrong. Uh, <laughs> right. They they talk about like uh, we're no longer taking volunteers for the uh, having your DNA like intertwined with the uh, mantis, but we are taking <laughs> volunteers uh, to fight off the army of mantis people <laughs> that we created <laughs> and stuff like that. Like it, it, it has so a history of going very, very wrong. Yes, uh, there's and, all these like B level th- or B movie type illusions yeah. that they make. Like this, this crazy thing happened, and it's yeah, just behind it's like, closed it, doors. You don't. Have it's to worry mad about. science, pretty much. Yes. Yeah. What is our first ride? Where are we going with this? It's a great question. Well, I had been thinking a lot about the portal gun and the portal mechanism because that's mm-hmm. like the main gameplay loop that you get into is figuring out how to master this thing. Right. And it doesn't actually work in real life, right? Because you can't yeah. shoot a hole in the ground to your left and a hole in the ground to your right, jump in this one, and you'll shoot out of that one. Yeah. And even really if you could, we don't necessarily want our guests right. to and be it's, doing that. It's too risky. Our insurance rates would be really high, even yeah. with that 0.002% chance. <laughs> that's going to be at least one person a year. You know, it's not what we want on our <laughs> resume. But anyway, um, I was thinking we could do it almost as a, a sort of co-op, like basically take that mechanism and separate it from reality one step, but where it still feels like you're a part of it. And this is a little weird, but stay with me. Mm-hmm. So you can't have the part guest have the portal gun and shoot it and then jump through it themselves. Right. But what if they're controlling a portal gun that's on the other side of like a barrier? They have There's like a glass wall and they have a robotic companion uh-huh. going along with them. And it's kind of one of those games where it's like, if you flip this switch, then I can go through here and then I can flip the switch for you. Oh, and then you right. Can go through. One of those things. So... You can aim the gun from your side. I don't know if you have a joystick or something, mm-hmm. but you shoot the portal gun and you can see them run in and it's just a screen actually. That glass wall's not really a glass wall. It's a screen that looks like a mirror image of the room you're in. And so it's mm-hmm. like basically like you're playing the game but in a much more first person perspective. Right. And then at certain points your robot companion from the other side of the glass will shoot a portal in your room and then you just that basically opens the the door for you to exit. So it's not technically a portal. Well, Actually, technically, it is a portal because every right. door is a portal. But basically, it was just a door that was hidden or shut, and it just kind right. of opens into that kind of oval shape with right. a cool like neon ring around the outside. And you step through, and it's just the next room of the puzzle. Yeah. But you still get that feeling of, of I'm doing this, like I'm doing the portal thing, and I'm walking through portals, and I'm helping my little robotic buddy out. And you could still do some really cool visual effects mm-hmm. and roller coasters and stuff like that. So, if your buddy, the robot, shoots a hole in the ceiling and a hole in the floor. And he says, go ahead, jump through that hole in the floor. Like, that's really scary and exhilarating. And if the door actually opens on the floor, and then you jump through and it's actually just like a slide or something where it's going to feel like you keep dropping through the ceiling and then the floor and then the ceiling and then the floor. But it's really just a a (laughs) curved slide, like a really long slide. Right. But just the sensation of that, like 
man, when I was playing through this game, there were so many parts where I was just like giggling diabolically because I got in a, a loop where I just kept falling and kept falling oh, and falling. Oh, yeah, that's and I was the just best. cracking up, yeah. It's such a fun feeling to go through, and giving the park guests something that feels like they're doing that in real life mm-hmm. would be totally exhilarating. So that one's somewhat simple and not necessarily a ride, but it would be a cool way of replicating that experience. Totally. So that's, and that's my first idea. I, 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 I love the... I think because that feels sort of like Escape the Room-esque, mm-hmm. and I think that'll be like something we can do that's really cool that kind of captures the experience of the games is focusing on a few like pretty much really cool really high budget escape the room kind of test areas Mm -hmm. and uh yeah i feel like uh another another solution because i really like what you said about the like uh being able to have a robot buddy that's like opening portals for you uh I I also like hmm I I'm wondering if we can do kind of like a force if we can open our own portal at some point just mm-hmm. being like uh cuz the nice thing about like if you if we're going off the game we can just have like you know the white rectangle panel that shows yeah. you where you, where the portal pretty much will be in this room and then right. potentially like you're seeing kind of a force perspective thing of like oh I'm going to make a portal up in this like area over here uh mm-hmm. and uh you know if you shoot a portal over there and then uh go through the one in your room like obviously they've just recreated that distant area right next yes. to you but you oh. can create the illusion uh, you just went through a portal <laughs> and it would totally actually work like something i love about the games is just looking through a portal right. so if you're on the ground level and you shoot a portal onto the wall and then there you also shot one up on the third floor on the wall mm-hmm. If you look through on the first floor, you can see down on the third floor. Like, you might be able to see yourself all the way down there. In real life, we can't do that, but we can replicate every other part, except it won't show you down there. But you can look through the portal and see from a different perspective of the same room you're in. Oh, that would be so mind-bending as a part guess, I think. Like, Yeah. Oh, I love that. That's fantastic. uh, You know, I have... have, Because last time I was on the show, my goal was to make carnival games fun and i think we actually pulled that off uh my goal for this one is to make uh shooting gallery rides fun because there's always those like uh like the buzz lightyear whatever ride uh or the (laughs) men in black ride at universal where it's just like you're going through this you're on a track and you're going through this area and you have these light guns and you're shooting like these little light targets uh, right. And, uh, you know, and it's literally just like, oh, if you hit something, like, it, an animatronic might, like, do a 360 or something, and that's right. it. Uh, or worst case scenario, you get 10 points on your blaster. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's like laser tag, but nobody moves. It's like, come on. <laughs> yeah, guys. exactly. Yeah, it could be way better. All right, uh, what's, what's your pitch? How and, are you going to fix that? Yeah. It, so, this is how we make shooting galleries actually fun. Uh, you're on the track, you're in Aperture uh, Labs, you're in going through the test area, and uh, instead of just shooting directly at something, you're actually shooting specific spots to open portals, and you have to shoot, like, uh, two different areas. Let's say, let's say you go into a room, you ride into a room, and there's a turret on the ground, uh, and you need to get rid of this turret. So you and you have multiple options of where you can shoot this portal. And let's say you shoot mm-hmm. a portal under the turret and then one like a portal on the ceiling, mm-hmm. then like it would react by like sending that uh, turret under the ground and then having another one like, you know, come out of yeah. the ceiling and crash. And you just have to have one turret behind every possible shoot that place they could shoot the second portal mm-hmm. and it just topples out. <laughs> That's exactly. Awesome. Or just like, it's like, okay, there's a flamethrower over here that I'm going to shoot a portal in front of and shoot one like near, like behind the turret. And then a bunch of Mm -hmm. flames are going to come up and like blow up the turret and like, (laughs) or lasers and stuff like that. Uh, Wow. Actually, yeah, redirecting lasers is much more 
portally but yeah. i love the idea of doing like a shooting gallery thing but you're actually influencing like what will happen with the animatronics by shooting wow. multiple portals and you can even do it if because assuming you're in a cart that's gonna it's not gonna be one person per cart so mm -hmm. it could be like one person in the cart has a blue portal gun and the other person has an orange portal gun mm -hmm. so you're deciding in each room like okay this is how this is where this thing's gonna come out of the wall but you're choosing which thing will come out of the wall and oh, stuff like that that is so cool wow i really like that a lot we it's out. so interesting <laughs> i think that there's so much potential there right just yeah. that one ride could have so many different experiences in it. Mm -hmm. <sighs> and awesome. uh <laughs> and we have to this is this is my my absolute necessity for this theme park mm -hmm. is having like a massive like 40 foot animatronic glados hanging from the ceiling at some point yes oh uh, my gosh because you actually multiple times in the games you face off against glados who has this massive hanging like robot body and uh and uh it is it is canon that uh the the portal surfaces are made out of pretty much crushed up moon rock yeah and so i would i would love in that like final room when you're face to face with glados if you can uh like if you're a real sharpshooter or something uh and you see the sky you can like aim for the, the, the fake moon and then oh. have like fans come in or whatever and uh <laughs> that's one way to defeat glados at the end that's is awesome. shooting the moon yeah I'm very down for that that's super cool i love that idea oh and yeah goddess or is a really cool character and like you'll be able to hear her voice throughout at least the more modern parts of the park anyway mm -hmm. but having a showdown with her is a really cool idea like just like yeah. in the games like she's kind of a problem a lot of the time you know? yeah and then I'm, we can also, okay. we can also do that just sort of because it's aperture we can just just do that like uh, super unfair like you just defeated GLaDOS and then it's like thanks for uh, for participating in our simulation that did not actually happen and had no real consequences yeah that makes yeah. a lot of sense like they kind of do that they kind of I don't know if rub your nose in it is the right word but they yeah, like a lot of make fun outs. of you a lot and yeah. give you a hard time and there are so many good moments for like humor and like making fun of the park guests or like trying to confuse them yeah like there's this one easter egg where it's like something about how if your if your blood smells like gasoline that's totally normal because <laughs> we've been shooting you with an invisible laser that turns your blood into gasoline it's like what like these just nonsense things but it's like because it's this mad science world you can just like have that play one out of a hundred times out of any one you know yeah exactly or whatever have by, all these uh, random things which the <sighs> the the owner of uh aperture uh is uh cave johnson who is voiced by jk simmons uh mm -hmm. jj jameson himself and uh yeah and everything he says is absolutely hilarious and yeah he he would definitely need to be like the voice of aperture throughout throughout the earlier years because yes he, he mysteriously the died of moon rock poisoning <laughs> right if we had like an Epcot kind of area or like a um, it's a small world kind of attraction, like a little mm -hmm. thing like Carousel Progress, just showing like the history oh of all their gosh. inventions and having him be the narrator and just be a little be deranged great. the whole time. <laughs> I would awesome. love a Carousel of Progress that's like actually entertaining mm -hmm. <laughs> and not just like, boy, they were wrong about what the early <laughs> 2000s would look like. Right. Oh, man really cool yeah um, no. it, it'd be neat to have an, a history i know it's gonna be a little time travely but so maybe mm -hmm. this meets that same need but i was thinking about doing like a a museum kind of area mm -hmm. of showing like you know the humble beginnings or maybe right. you just go back to the 50s or 40s and it's just aperture fixtures and like they're yeah they're making shower curtains for the u.s military and it's like <laughs> that's all we do is <laughs> shower curtains <laughs> and then we're really curious about moon rocks like what's the future of moon rocks oh maybe that would that's be it. do it do a carousel of progress in each decade and it's like see how wrong they were about the following decade and the oh my decade. gosh that'd be amazing <laughs> i do i love the idea of like when we get into the 50s is pretty much like a parody of early disney uh yes. and oh, that's cool. having all those like weird uh animatronics that are super janky and uh uh yeah. just have like 
Abe, Abe Lincoln has, like, escaped <laughs> and <laughs> he's malfunctioning and stuff. Right. Uh, oh. But I love, I love the idea of one of the time travel areas you can go to is just the 40s aperture where it's literally just a small area that has a bunch of shower <laughs> curtains and nothing else. Right. But they're all, like, really excited about science in the future and... <laughs> They have like a, a, a board of like ideas, and it's like those are. It's just shower related technology. <laughs> the future of soap, like the possibilities are Cutting limitless in shower <laughs> military <tech>. showers. <laughs> oh man! But then the scope just gets gigantic and out of control, and then it's like, here's our you know experimental prototype city of tomorrow, and it's like. I do not want to live in Cave Johnson's vision of the future. You know? It's just like this dictatorship. Oh man! Like, what if he had a a, a kind of Bioshock style world? Like, he made his utopia. Right. Yeah, that'd be a pretty cool sequel, or like a a cross pollination between Bioshock and Portal. Mm-hmm. This like '80s utopia version of the of apertures he could have used vision. his time travel because he is like i said he died of moon rock poisoning but it could <laughs> now once we've established time travel he could have just gone to the future once pretty much because that's one thing we find out with uh in half-life 2 like the world is invaded by all of these uh aliens and it turns out that the aliens are there specifically because they've uh seen we've discovered teleportation technology Mm -hmm. and they want that technology uh and it's because uh aperture labs lost a ship called the ss borealis in like a uh a portal accident (laughs) and uh and so i would love the idea of like Cave Johnson just traveled to the future after his technology is responsible for the destruction of the world so that now he can just take over it. I'd be all for that. I like that that. a lot. That's really cool. And there is the whole combine. Like, the aliens from Mm -hmm. Half-Life 2 are... Or Half-Life 1. Well, Half-Life. Wait. Right. I don't remember. But they're out there in the world. Like, if you were to leave Aperture Science after Portal 2, there's just aliens running around, as far Mm -hmm. as I know. Like... I would love after the of, seven hours war. Right, yeah, we could definitely do like references that. to that. And yeah, that'd be great. Get yeah, out I mean, of, if you have that area where you could shoot the moon. You know, like if you have access to the sky, it'd be cool if you show some of the kind of Half Life Two stuff going on up there. Mm-hmm. I would huh. love. I would love if you could find somewhere in the park. You could find one gravity gun from Half Life Two. Uh, oh, that's cool. That would be very fun. <laughs> How would you work that one out? <laughs> How does no that change idea. the shooting gallery? Oh my gosh. <laughs> just like, can it just be like a Nerf shooter? <laughs> like, yeah, you're really excited about getting this gun, but it just shoots out <laughs> these foam darts. Yeah. And they're just we like, just we're totally... still working on our gravity gun technology. Right. This is just a prototype. <laughs> That's good. Cool. Uh, wow. So there's a lot going on here, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm curious about what your thoughts are, what we could do with the the different, like, cores, like the logic core, the emotion yeah, core, but, these different, like, robotic, like, AI inside these little pluggable things. Like, it's kind of Yeah, weird. they're like it's, spheres that... Yeah. Uh, and they each have, like, personalities and can bring a part of, like, the human brain they're trying to, like, replicate mm-hmm. for for whatever reason, I guess. They're, they seem pretty interchangeable and pretty versatile. Yeah. But I also think they're really interesting. Yeah, and a lot of them were created sort of to, like, the great thing about the personality cores is a lot of them were created to, like, sort of dampen GLaDOS's uh, intelligence because she was too intelligent and, um, right. intelligent and immediately tried to, like, murder everyone right off the bat. <laughs> and right. so they made these uh, different, like, a morality core. And uh, uh, Wheatley, who is sort of your companion throughout a good chunk of Portal 2, it turns out he's the uh, core that was like just specifically came up with terrible ideas to cloud GLaDOS's judgment, and so right. he's just a total idiot, and it's amazing. It's like an intelligence dampening core or something yeah. like that. <laughs> and I actually I had a thought about. Uh, do you know the uh, sort of magic fountain at uh, Universal Studios that will like they'll every hour or so. They have someone like get on a microphone and talk through the fountain, and so you can actually like interact with this fountain. Uh, 
No, I haven't heard of that. I thought yeah, I, that's yeah. in the Lost Continent at uh, Islands of Adventure, huh. uh, and it's great because it's always like pretty much an improv comedian that's doing mm-hmm. it, and is just making fun of people that are walking past and stuff like that. And uh, I would I would absolutely love if we had some kind of element with these personality cores where like different ones were uh, were being controlled by like you know unseen puppeteers with mics that are improving a bunch of stuff and you're actually able to communicate with them. Oh, that's that's fantastic. I really like that a lot. And they they're they move around. Like it's basically mm-hmm. like an eyeball. Like yeah. they move around and they can like spin and stuff, but mm-hmm. having that be a camera or have it be remote controlled. Mm-hmm. You know, you could just be a comedian in a room moving this eyeball around and making it like kind of spaz out or stare at someone and watch them as they go by. It would exactly. be really funny and like having speakers and stuff built in obviously yeah and that might be a cool thing like if you can switch them out like which one is plugged into gladys would be kind uh, of interesting if there's that would be different scenarios you go through because like wheatley gets plugged in at one point yeah and he kind of goes mad with power and it seems like that that the power there just automatically corrupts whichever personality you would put in charge of it Mm -hmm. but that could be in a way of making more diverse stories like so it's not the same every time you go in sometimes Mm -hmm. the space core is the one like in charge of the whole system and so maybe it changes the narration throughout the whole park (laughs) or maybe just changes the the ending battle it's like right things are a little different it's a different type of attraction yeah someone else is in charge of it i love that idea of just like and that can even be uh like uh it can even be like because there's always that sort of like you did it room like at the end of rides where it's just like you made it through i would love to i would love it to be like uh after you defeat gladys or whatever whatever core you picked is now like the the person in charge of the facility uh in that last room and you can like interact with them and stuff and it'll change the ending every time i just love the idea of i i'm dreading the uh the line like wait times because of how sort of diverse this ride is the experience of it yeah but, uh but i just love this idea of like oh yeah you can g- go on this ride and y- you can ride it like 20 times and it'll be different every time well what we could do is just have a different copy of it for each core and that way mm-hmm. we don't have to go like screwing in a new light bulb every time someone else walks into the room right it's like you choose which which core, or somehow you pick which one, or maybe mm-hmm. it's just randomized. You go to room one, shoot you go to a room shoot two. a portal under whichever core you want to. Activate there you go. Or, yeah. That's cool. I like that a lot, man. That's really neat. Uh, I think the technology here could be super cool, and like, I, I don't know, just the feeling of being here is like the main thing I'm after. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of a lot of theme parks that we do, it's like there are certain attractions I really want to do. This one, it's more I just kind of want to be there and like overhear all the like dark comedy and explore the just the dark underbelly right. kind of b-movie plots that are sort of being cooked up by these mad scientists <laughs> i feel like we need a coaster yeah and you know what we could do a whole area that's like a theme park within aperture labs like maybe mm-hmm. they're trying to do a new new way of raising funds and or maybe a new way of getting attracting people to become voluntary you know test subjects yeah. is like there's a, a theme park here, you know, you pay $60 or whatever to go to the theme park and you can be a, an actual aperture, you know, test subject. I, I l- absolutely love the premise of this park being like, <laughs> we made a theme park to entrap people in right. our tests and get them to test for it. We can, it can even be like, uh, the roller coaster. Do you know, uh, test track at Epcot? Yeah. Yeah. So it's just like your test, you're on this, like car test that's like you go over these bumps to test out the shocks and like you you know it takes off to see how fast it can go and all this stuff and see it's turning uh and it's i i love the idea of a roller coaster like that where it's just like oh yeah this is a totally normal roller coaster and we're definitely not going to do any testing on you and then it's just like putting you through all these like heat resistance and like uh vibration resistance and uh, what happens if we uh, sort of like slingshot this through a portal at the moon and stuff like oh that? Oh my gosh, that sounds so cool. Which I, I now that because you mentioned the uh, putting a portal below you and directly above you and you get that yeah. like crazy momentum. <laughs> I, uh, love that. I would, I would love like I feel like a roller coaster would be 
so good for replicating that just like a downward drop Mm -hmm. uh and literally it literally just needs to be like you know in a hundred foot drop but you're going you're passing through these like portals at the same time and so it looks like you're going through that but god that would be so fun yeah that's really cool that could just be a drop coaster like that's its own thing almost you know step through this portal and or because it's a theme park it's like everyone get in your safety harness and we're gonna all go through this portal and that's that's, another thing we could make fun is those uh those like those free fall drop rides Mm -hmm. it could be portal momentum based Right. Uh, where it's just like, all right, we're gonna like make we're gonna drop you through these uh portals. Okay, now we're gonna turn off the gravity so you rise up to the top again and just have a narrative for those just rides where you just drop. Right. And some of these could be like kind of cheesy because those are the ones that Aperture's just making and advertising to bring people in. Right. And so like you could just have some kind of like silly like kitty rides, like nothing that's too actually thematic, but it's like right. the Aperture theme park area. And then some of them are actual experiments they're running on you, but it mm-hmm. just looks like a roller coaster. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, there's a lot of room for expansion in that space. There's so many cool things that you could do. I, I, just, lo- I love all the Easter eggs in the series, too. Like, yeah. The thing earlier about, like, people's blood being turned into gasoline. Like, mm-hmm. if you see, like, you walk by a testing area and there's, like, a chair and it's just covered in gasoline, and you're like, uh, I wonder <laughs> 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 or it's like I don't know just like you could do some pretty like dark humor kinds mm-hmm. of things of like clearly someone just got totally splattered here and yeah. but their blood was gasoline so there's no blood stains. <laughs> <laughs> I and I love I love having like just a bunch of animatronic robots throughout the park like mm-hmm. even as like a cleanup crew for the for oh, the incidents. That's really fun. Yeah. That's uh, really cool. And and even like if we could do like a lot of self checkout at restaurants and stuff and have like a uh, a robot cashier that you can interact with yes I would just like making that. jokes and like mm-hmm. glitching out a little bit but mm-hmm. also still being a functional piece of equipment i, I love it like you so scan good. something and it says a million dollars or something <laughs> right? and nine, then it's nine, just nine, like nine. immediately charged <laughs> million dollars that's really funny (laughs) and it like prints out a novelty receipt that like it has a place for you to sign and everything but turns out you hadn't actually like swiped your card but it's like it's still really scary for a second because like did you just it comes out saying visa nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents what for a milkshake (laughs) that's pretty fun great uh (laughs) oh something else i thought of because another the there's portals, and then in the second game, they introduce the gels, which mm-hmm. uh, there's three different types, and there's one that's just a white gel that creates a portal surface on anything, and then there's the orange gel that makes you run really fast when you're on it, and then there's the blue gel that's sort of like a bouncy gel where you can bounce off of it. And I was trying to figure out what the heck to do, like how to incorporate that, which would be pretty easy in like... Uh, a roller coaster it'll just be like okay we're going over the orange gel and it speeds up a bunch right, or it's like right. we're going on the blue gel and it like does the uh hills that feels like you're bouncing oh uh but uh uh which actually that'd be really cool to be like you're hurtling towards a wall and at the last second like the white gel hits it and the wall like gives away for a portal oh that's cool uh but uh I also really like the idea of, uh, like, doing an obstacle course with gels Mm. to where, like, uh, where it's sort of also, like, a test chamber slash, like, rat maze kind of thing. So is it actually just, like, trampolines and treadmills and, like... Yeah, it would be, like, it would be, like, you know, blue like it would have be painted like it's a gel surface but it'd be like blue treadmills and like those uh or blue trampolines and then like those like airport treadmills for Mm -hmm. the for the orange the orange uh, yeah and and all you have to do is color those things those just color it that color and it's like yeah don't worry this course has been treated with our you know aperture gels already yeah so and 
and it, it seems very simple but also i would love to do that oh yeah <laughs> like that seems super yeah absolutely fun. especially uh, if it's like for for science you know they're like measuring your your speed or like they're mm-hmm. taking some measurements as you go through it so it feels like you're actually contributing something instead of just like doing an attraction which i i think it would be also really cool in that area to uh run up against uh turrets and even mm-hmm. if it's like we could even do like turrets that shoot out water like spray you with water and like have those controlled by uh by park visitors mm-hmm. where like it could be like oh. a side thing so you're trying to shoot these people on the obstacle course that's awesome uh <laughs> but i would i i really want to do some sort of turret avoidance like yes that would be really fun I think it'd be cool to do a laser puzzle kind of thing as well, because that's like another mechanism that feels mm-hmm. very portally, but yeah. you don't have to actually defy physics to do it. Just having a turret with a laser, and you need to shine that laser into a certain. Oh, spot. that'd be so cool! Just like yeah. having an actual mirror that like reflects, uh, yeah. and even like in, in certain areas, like you're trying to avoid the lasers, like mm-hmm. you're like a. Uh, you need to have it complete the circuit or something so you can't mm-hmm. break that laser but then you have yeah. to redirect this laser to oh, that'd be yeah so that sounds cool. really cool and that could just be like a sequence of rooms kind of an escape room type of deal just to unlock the next room you have to sh- you know find the target and hit it with the laser i really but, want there to be a portal escape room now because like yeah, the idea of just reflecting a laser off of a mirror is so like I could go out and make that for 20 bucks and just have like a, have a a light sensor on a different part, like, you know, set somewhere and you're, you're good. How is that not already a thing? That's so cool. I know. That's totally true. It might be, maybe it is, who knows? But that, I think escape room type of experiences work really well. And also like a dark room roller coaster Mm -hmm. works really well too. Like you said, with the different gels and then you can actually have them go through portals and things like that without having the human element of being able to move wherever you want to, which breaks the right. illusion of everything. But I think there's a lot of potential for dark, dark room roller coaster type. Things, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. God, I would love oh, that. Man, this is amazing. I really, really dig it. Um, and there's so much room to add personality and like elaborate mm-hmm. onto the, you know, the system that's already there with additional robots and additional tests and, I think we'd have to employ a lot of comedians who are coming up with like, yeah. you know, just these bizarre mad science type of things and like really good jokes you can make at, at the park guest yeah. expense. Or even oh, if yeah. we, even if we have like, because there are those people that, uh, like on the jungle cruise, you're, you know, they have, uh, a lot of like scripted jokes or jokes mm-hmm. that you can like pull up for different situations. Uh, but you're encouraged to come up with your own or even like I know the uh, the I met the Grinch at Seuss Landing in Universal Studios once and they had like a guy that actually had a bunch of like script I'm assuming scripted jokes uh-huh. uh, he called me a kangaroo for wearing a fanny pack and I've <laughs> yet to live that one down yeah uh, <laughs> Well, that's why you need the grief counseling, which is another thing that's kind of promised to you if you can complete the the test is, you know, you'll get cake oh and my grief counseling. I would... So it'd be really funny because especially there's people, you know, making kind of cruel jokes the whole time and there's this whole dark comedy thing. You get to kind of the relaxation area. There's some, you know, relaxation oh vaults and then there's like a grief grief counseling robot. I to love help you, like, grief. Unwind. Oh my God. Grief counseling robot would be the best. So <laughs> right. you're a failure. <laughs> uh, it's okay that, that you never succeed about any with anything that's pretty good <laughs> oh my gosh and i like the idea of having relaxation vaults which are just those really weird sterile little uh-huh. tiny hotel room type things yeah um that if we have an on-site hotel room uh-huh. that would absolutely be that yeah oh, that'd be so fun or even if you just need a little break or just a thing to kind mm-hmm. of tour you can they just have, you know, the bed. I think there's just a bed, a toilet, and a radio, maybe. There's, like, just yeah. three things usually in the, the little ones. A nice but then there's stock the extended hotel stay painting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What's that? A nice stock hotel painting yep, on the absolutely. wall. It's terrible. <laughs> oh, that'd be great. There's so much going on here. It's awesome. Yeah. I just, I love, like, I, it doesn't even have to be portal i just want to see the time travel based theme park like that sounds so cool just seeing the same area throughout different time periods would be 
Awesome. What do you think that that looks like? What is it like for the experience of the park guests to go from the 80s to the 60s? Do they get onto an attraction to do that? Do they walk through a doorway? Is there like one of those hallways with the rotating like Yeah, that's what I, I assume just for like traffic's sake, the uh-huh. uh the hallway with some crazy light effect uh yeah going on uh and even have like just some some kind of swirling abyss that you're walking through uh mm-hmm. and it can even be like just a, a circular screen and just have like oh there's a turret that's like spinning around in there or something and uh-huh. uh but you could also do like a hogwarts express kind of like get onto this contraption and it'll yeah. slingshot you backwards in time and that'd be a... that's cool it would be neat if it if it's a thing you kind of sit in, sit in, and it doesn't look like it's a roller coaster at all. Like it just looks like a chair with some straps on it, and then the lights mm-hmm. go out, and you do like some crazy light show, and then you're moving around a little bit, and then the lights come back on, and it feels like you're in the exact same room, but then you exit out the door, and it's like, oh, right, what? Like oh, exact cool. copies yeah. of the same attraction in each place. So, because mm-hmm. huh. that's how time machines work in a lot of fiction. Like yeah. the time machine, H.G. Wells. It's like it's just kind of this cool car that just sits here for eternity and you just appear mm-hmm. there it could hmm. you know what it could even be <clears throat> if we did a uh i think the best way to do that it would be if we did uh a tiered theme park uh-huh. uh because there's that sort of uh in the haunted mansion in the disneyland one there's the stretching room that's actually mm-hmm. like secretly an elevator yeah uh, to take you down to this tunnel uh and uh but like a lot of people just don't even notice that they're on an elevator it just seems right. like the room stretching and i would love that like the time machine is literally just an elevator taking you to like the next time period and you walk out yes. and you're in the same spot but oh i love that then it's literally exactly the same yeah seats you're sitting in that's really cool and then you could do that maybe set it up so the biggest area which is probably the most modern time period mm mm-hmm. mhm is the bottom level and so it's just kind of like a yeah. pyramid type of shape yeah the, the 40s you're gonna have yeah. like a small office like a you know a few cubicles and yeah a bunch of shower curtains and then yeah yeah that, i definitely like the idea of like a yeah or i mean you could also because they're all going to be different sizes you know maybe the 40s through the 70s are on a single floor wait that wouldn't work never mind no yeah we'll <laughs> stack them we'll stack them that works I, I like the pyramid idea what's that what's that pyramid in uh, las vegas yeah, the, the Luxor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just and then you could also make it just a big box and use that empty space for roller coasters. Yeah, and stuff, to hide the know? dark rides and stuff. Yeah. That'd I think really this cool. should be a mostly indoor mm-hmm. experience because the games are like that, except for the very end of each game. Right. When you're maybe escaping, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, that's something I really love about the update to the end of Portal 1, the original Portal, I mean. Mm hmm when you assume the the what is it called the party yeah position or whatever you yeah. like lay down flat on the ground and then a robot comes and grabs you and takes you to the party Tricks you away yeah because through like multiple times goddess is trying to get you to assume like the i forget what it's called it's like the party, party position or something like that yeah. which is just to lay down on the ground and <laughs> chell's not gonna do it it's good until she's like unconscious and then it's like thank you for assuming that <laughs> oh man I also really, I just realized, like, because the thing that sounds really fun about this is it being, like, a parody of theme parks, in mm-hmm. a way, mm-hmm. and just, like, being able to do, like, fake uh, fake health warnings of, like, if you're allergic to bullets, then <laughs> don't go on this. If your skin is highly susceptible to flames. Right? <laughs> Oh, man, there was one that was, um, I forget what it was exactly, but it said, it was some some kind of warning about, like, you know, your skin's, if your skin is, oh, you know, sensitive to being removed or whatever. Oh, they, yeah. they recommend, <laughs> please remember what your skin looks like so we can reattach it afterwards. <laughs> there's so many good warnings like that that are just yeah. going to totally throw people off. Even if there's one on every attraction, they're going to be so drastically different. Yeah, oh, man. if you're allergic to, if you have a peanut allergy, please be warned that your blood may be turned into peanuts <laughs> during this attraction. Be aware of the giant peanut people that <laughs> right. you on this ride. 
Oh, man. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm all for that. There's a lot of potential for... It's going to be a 90% comedic thing with, you know, some exploration elements. But I do mm-hmm. like also the kind of scary, like, manic rat man kind of areas oh, where it's yeah. like, this is not okay. Like, you think about what they're actually doing here. You know, it's it's kind of a cool idea to have some of the jungle, like Upton Sinclair being included behind the scenes a little bit. Like, this is mm-hmm. not a joke, people. Like, they're actually being serious about these crazy things. It and could, people are dying here. You know what I just realized? Because one of the coolest parts of the original game is you're going through all these tests, and then like right before you're murdered by Glados in flames, you're you portal out of there, and uh, and suddenly you're sort of behind the scenes, and mm-hmm. you're seeing like the offices and the yeah. observation chambers and stuff. I would love for there to be a whole section of the park that's just like uh, Ratman like layer kind of section where it's just like. Uh, where you're behind the scenes, you see like the the uh, pneumatic tubes and all this stuff, and like you see all the defective technology that mm-hmm. you can like play around with. Uh, That's cool. back there. So there's just like a bunch of like there's a lot of like defective turrets that mm-hmm. you can interact with, and uh, and just like thrown away abandoned technology and right. a lot of like behind the scenes. Uh, stuff and there can even be an interactive thing of like here's how you make a potato battery or Aww, something like yeah, that that's cool like the defective robots just say really random stuff or mm-hmm. or there are some defective robots that are like um actual real life theme park stuff that someone might actually want like if you need a map of the theme park and it's just mm-hmm. labeled like bin of defective robots and one of them is talking to you about how this is a theme park mm-hmm. whereas everything else is like being relatively serious about the theme Mm-hmm. There are a few of them that totally break the fourth wall, so to yeah. speak, and they're just would, labeled as being defective. <laughs> yeah, I love I love the idea of just a section of the park being like the island for lost toys, but uh-huh. like but just oh, defective that's really cool. robots. Yeah, um, I also like the idea of including some like mystery kinds of things, like if you can decipher you know Ratman's artwork ooh, and there's yeah. some, like hidden things, or there's like a certain robot that's telling you a riddle and if you can solve it you find like an extra room somewhere or you can right uncover some of the like mysteries in the story so you can enjoy the park completely on the surface level but there's Mm -hmm. also some kind of secret kinds of stuff going on or it can be you know it'd be a really cool thing is like one of the things you can figure out through the puzzle is it'll tell you like a secret thing you can shoot with your portal gun in the shooting Mm -hmm. gallery ride and then like some kind of special event happens specifically in that scenario so it'll be like shoot the uh portrait of cave johnson uh in the third chamber or something and then like some awesome thing happens whenever that whenever you do that that's cool or if you look you're like so um, Caroline, who was Cave's mm-hmm. assistant throughout, yeah. I don't know when she started exactly, but it'd be cool to see her starting as like, you know, as an intern or whatever in the uh-huh. 60s or something. But anyway, what I was trying to say is she's the personality that eventually becomes Gladys. It'd be really mm-hmm. cool to learn some secret about her and then you can right. bring it up when you're talking to Gladys or when you're talking <laughs> to Caroline and that will trigger some kind of unique event. Oh, you know, if you find out awesome. that she's scared of clowns or whatever and you can bring Mm -hmm. that up or you know some kind of personal little detail that helps you to like connect and get into like a deeper experience Mm -hmm. (sighs) i i i of all the because we were talking about like the personality cores being uh interactive Mm -hmm. i would absolutely love if we could like find enough voice actresses that have a similar enough like glados impersonation that we can Mm -hmm. make glados interactive because that would be so that would be so fun oh yeah actually that's one thing i just remembered is they had the uh vr demo that valve made that's like uh uh portal puzzle room thing and at the end like the wall gives away and there's the massive glados right there and uh playing that like that's something that doesn't register with you when you're playing the game especially Mm -hmm. since you're not you don't have like human scale to compare her to but in vr the massive glados is one of the most like terrifying and awesome things i've ever experienced uh and yeah i would i would i really want to capture that that sense because it is just like it is such a funny but absolutely terrifying character when you're like right. face to face oh, with her 
seriously that would be a really cool thing to do like you could even just have a bank of you know a few thousand phrases and someone can just Mm -hmm. either or just use a voice changer kind of thing like figure out the technology so then anyone can portray that because all the robots have a sort of similar effects you know digital processing auto tune kind of like yeah and they sound really cool Mm -hmm. i love the sound like the turrets little baby voices and Mm -hmm. everyone all the robots sound super cool but that's a great idea having it be interactive because that's something we've never seen before because chell doesn't Mm -hmm. talk at all right so it'd be interesting having more of a back and forth interactive kind of thing Mm -hmm. yeah that's awesome i'm i'm so i'm so upset this doesn't (laughs) <laughs> I know. Exist. Like, between, like, the time travel and also just being a parody of theme parks and the whole, like, puzzle aspect of a theme mm-hmm. park, which I've never seen before. Like, I just, I, I'm so, I'm so angry this doesn't exist. I know. In a way, this show, this show is super rewarding to do, but it is a little bit heartbreaking that this doesn't exist. Although. Yeah, I need to stop coming on this show. <laughs> Every right. time I'm just, like. <laughs> it's just it's just frustrating myself. Hopefully, so the cool. next generation of of Imagineers and theme park designers mm. listen to this, or they are having similar ideas wherever they are. But Here's they're the just thing. under a non disclosure agreement; they can't actually say them out loud like right. we can. But hopefully, <laughs> these conversations are happening all over the world, and this uh, is the future. Here's the thing: is that Valve is insane and yes. very rich, uh-huh. and I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> If they made, I would sincerely say that them making a theme park is more likely than them making another game at this point. <laughs> it's That's been fair. So yeah. long, but like they they do all these. It's they they're pretty much aperture because they've like talked about how they test with like they've been doing tests with uh, chips like in your brain that register certain emotions so it could tell you how games should react to you and all this stuff Whoa. like really crazy and they're super <laughs> obsessed with VR. And I yeah. just would not be surprised. At least, at least make the like, maybe they'll make the first like VR theme park where it's just like mm-hmm. you can go there in VR and interact yeah. with this. And I'm now that I say that, why is there not a fully VR theme park? Because that just seems like a cheap and right. like it, it would cost sixty bucks is what you pay for a game and like you know to get into a lot of parks. Mm-hmm. Like I would pay that. Seriously, I mean, being going through like four different VR games is a lot like going through four different attractions at a theme park. You know, there's even a lot of roller coaster VR experiences, but then there's also like on rail shooters. There's a lot of those same types of experiences. Like this could all Mm -hmm. be done in VR using just use the half life two assets again. Like they did with portal. Like, Oh yeah. You've already got the, uh, the, you know, visuals down. You have the character Mm -hmm. models, just expand it together, you know, put it together into one big theme park, which in a way, it's like walking through an arcade. Like, here's a game mm. you can play, and then walk over the next one. Here's a game you can play. That would be incredible. I, I really yeah. want that. Yeah. But <sighs> but also make it for real, though. Yes. For Do real both. is good. We can you know, use our be, physical human bodies. That'd be so cool for just, like, for Disney to be like, hey, for the people who can't make it to Disney, mm. here's mm-hmm. this $60 game that's, like, a VR recreation of Disney. And yeah. For people who, like, you know, have mobility issues or who are scared of, you know, um, crowds or don't do well with crowds. Yeah, like, exactly. That's yeah. a great idea. And then and then just, wow. like, and then it's not like you're going to lose money on tickets because it's still, like, cooler to ride a roller coaster in real life. But, oh yeah, like, and plus I, I will pay all the money to get those Mickey Mouse premium bars. I will, <laughs> I'll travel any distance, whatever I can. Uh, but, but, yeah. Yeah. Disney, get on it, dude. VR, and that's so much better Disney than having a scrapbook. Even if you took your picture on every single oh, ride, yeah. you forget what it feels like after ten years. But go back to the VR, and it's like this is exactly what Disney World was like in you know 2018, oh, and you can show so your grandkids. Cool. Yeah, that would like, be like great, just even strictly for archival purposes. That would wow. be awesome. Yeah, goodness. I mean, there is a whole industry of like of YouTube videos of just people walking through the park and like audio clips of just, mm-hmm. this is my day at Disneyland. You can hear all the sounds of the theme mm-hmm. park. People are totally nuts about that stuff. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah. I definitely don't watch those videos. <laughs> yeah, me too. Me too. I don't. I haven't, uh, I haven't watched the ride video for every single ride I haven't been on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Boy. Just going to Tokyo Disney Sea is expensive, but I really want to go there. <laughs> and YouTube's free, so gotta love it. <laughs> yeah, man. 
that's a great idea. Like we've just made some huge innovations. We've right made here at the we've, very end. we've made like five good theme parks within this one theme park. <laughs> True. True. And revolutionized the future of the whole industry. Even, exactly. Uh, even if they're not physical, they're the VR idea. Eh, that's pretty VR, great. We're we're officially I think I think we are officially recognized as Imagineers at this point. Yep. Honorary I so. Imagineers. <laughs> I, I love I, I just love the idea of just like it seems like such a good way to like work through anything is just mm-hmm. like a brainstorming podcast yeah it's worked for me it's like that's just a mental thing for me is I always have ideas I'm churning through and like if I'm just blathering on at my wife about my cool ideas for the day she's like mm-hmm. yeah okay you you do this every single day like it's it's a little bit much right but right having it uh, in a productive method where it's like with someone who cares and who also has ideas about it. It's like, I don't know, brainstorming is a magical thing and communicating about it and recording it. Oh man, it's cool. Everyone should start a podcast, by the way, even if it's just a hypothetical brainstorming one. Do it. You know what? Everyone should start a podcast where they make up amusement parks. I think that's a really, (laughs) I think it's a really original idea. (laughs) <laughs> and uh last i checked which i have checked very recently uh you have not this is not in the uh patent office office or anything this is no it's open free source. up for gra- yep. copy left man <laughs> amusements parks <laughs> with a bunch of s's at the end <laughs> i literally was thinking today about doing amusement sparks too like getting someone else to do a podcast that's the same idea just they do different stuff because i'm really into like certain w- things you know cartoons and video games but if someone else is mm-hmm. into novels or history or whatever you can do theme parks on anything right It'd be kind of cool so yeah, yeah if anyone I, wants to do uh, for franchising opportunities hit me up if anyone wants to make this a branded show <laughs> hit me up if you want to be a guest also and you have a good idea hit me up awesome well jonathan o roseline thanks for being on man you're a fantastic guest you're so good at this it's fun thank you sure thank you this is my missed calling uh, if I, I'm only I'm only a full engineering degree away from being able to do this for a living, <laughs> right? Pretty much halfway there. And I mean, amateurs can be very successful. You know, I this I don't know. This is like my 28th theme park or something. But I'm a right. total amateur. Like you just start doing it, and then suddenly yeah. you have experience, and then you're like, hey, well, I'm not technically an amateur. I've got some something on my resume. It's kind of weird. Yeah, this would yeah, actually be like a legit good like resume thing for imagineering like <laughs> right that's totally true so yeah now you just need um, to learn how to make people not die through physics or whatever <laughs> right yeah there's uh definitely some danger to watch out for and at this phase it's pretty safe i think mm-hmm. maybe we should start doing a warning at the beginning <laughs> don't try to build any of the things we're about to recommend yeah. without the proper clearance and insurance and use whatever. lots of like nice soft foam in all of your recreations mm. of these parks multi-million dollar recreations always wear a helmet and a (laughs) safety harness every day perfect (laughs) cool well the portal theme park it really came together i think that was that was wild and it feels very aperture science to me yeah it captures the the vibe of the the world of the games i think it's not quite as puzzly it's more exploration kind of stuff but hey that's awesome i think it's really cool in the immortal words of glados this was a triumph (laughs) <laughs> there you go and then we can have um our cake and eat it too oh my. <laughs> uh little yeah that wait we need to sell cake somewhere right or no oh i do have a note that's literally just sell sell cake and lemonade when life yes. gives you lemons when life gives you lemons <laughs> make combustible lemons and throw them at your enemy's <laughs> Burn house Burn life's house down with it <laughs> <laughs> well that's one of the easter eggs you have to uh, have are stuff. some combustible lemons that's pretty good. <laughs> That'd be a great test the, in the in the uh, th- thrown away technology area. Mm-hmm. It's just lemon grenades. Or in the gift <laughs> shop, like it's like it's in a you know hermetically <laughs> sealed container. Like caution, you know, live explosive lemon. <laughs> I would There's legit buy cool just little... like a a lemon with like a, a grenade pin sticking out of it. Oh. They could sell those for ten bucks, and I would buy art. that. Yeah, that's art. That's beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, man, the, the gift shop we didn't get into, but that could have some really fun. Oh my gosh! I mean, the shower curtains for a start, but but there's oh, so much more so you can much include. So much sad tech and oh, <laughs> that'd be great. Sad tech. 
Oh goodness, that's good. <sighs> awesome. Well, thanks for being on, man. That was that was super fun. Have yourself a good one. And if listener, if you haven't checked out Make Stuff on YouTube, please do. And on Patreon, right? What do you have going on on Patreon? There's yep. some new stuff in the works, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We have we just released a new comic on the Patreon. You get to see every video a week before everyone else. Uh, we do exclusive comics and exclusive like behind the scenes vlogs and commentary editions. Uh, podcasts are going to be starting soon because this is too fun to not do myself. Right. Uh, it's going to be about the saga comic. Uh, oh no way! Oh, we're still working on the we're working on the title. But me and my buddy uh, from Polyphonic the music video essay youtube cool. uh we are both obsessed with saga so oh. that'll be coming soon and yeah and a bunch of cool comics on the way uh so stay tuned it's uh patreon.com slash rose lion my last name sweet sounds good check it out y'all have a good one yeah you too, too man and i'll send you those files awesome can't wait yep. bye thank bye. you